Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. This is Jennifer Biggs. Welcome to Sound Bites. Today I'm in the studio with Christina McCarter. We're going to talk about Memphis Dining Week and also some of the other things that Christina does. She's doing plenty of things around town. You can find Sound Bites on WYXR 91.7, your crosstown radio, Thursday at 11, and on the Daily Memphian website. Christina, hello. Hey. hey. Well, Christina and I, well, let's just fess up. We just came from a nice lunch at Rizzo's. Yes. It was so good. <laughs> yes, it was. It's the first day. We're recording this on Tuesday, so we're on the first day yes. of uh, Memphis Dining Week. Yes, happy Memphis Dining Week. Well, this is a good, <laughs> it's a good thing. You've got 13 restaurants together, and you can tell us all about why you uh, decided to do it now, yeah. and how, and then we're going to talk about all the other things you do because right. you do a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so really, why? Right. This is a you know, it's a kind of an unusual time to say let's have yeah. a dining week. <laughs> so me and Lisa kind of felt like we wanted to do and, this. And now Lisa, Lisa is your partner in City several, Tasting Box. Right. Yeah. So. 2019 is when me and her, or 2018, I don't know anymore. Uh, (laughs) But when me and her first met, we knew we wanted to do events together. And, you know, 2020 happens, we can't do that. So outside of City Tasting Box, you know, we said, hey, let's, let's revisit that whole restaurant week or, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember telling her, I I just don't know. I I don't know because I'm so in tune with what's going on. And I I didn't know if this would be a good year for it because of everything that's going on. And she said, well, we we just got to figure it out. So I started reaching out to a few restaurants, kind of just letting them know, like, hey, we're we're thinking about doing this Memphis Dining Week. And the response was shocking how they were ready to do it, too. So I always try to go with, you know, my people first and listen to them and their concerns on things before I branch out really to do anything that I'm doing. So it was the same way this go around. There wasn't a just citywide restaurant week. And we felt like with the food that we have here, there needs to be a full out restaurant week or dining week, whatever you want to call it. So we just went for it. If we got five restaurants, we would have been just as happy, but we ended up with 13. So and 13 is actually, I mean, you, you say, you say we ended up with 13 kind of like. It's not a lot. Yeah, it, it is. It, it is. But it's a perfect amount for a week because right. you can schedule that. Some of the weeks will have like downtown dining week is always, um, you know, a lot of a restaurants, lot, yeah. but you get 40 plus restaurants and you have yeah. seven days and some of them aren't open mm-hmm. for the whole time. I still think it's a great thing. I'm oh, not, yeah. I'm not you know, yeah. definitely not talking it down in any way. It's fantastic. Yeah. But you got to. You have to pick and choose. Yeah, yeah. And this, you could feasibly do this. Yeah, by doing you could go lunches and to, dinners. Right. You could, you could, and breakfast. That's right. Of, yeah. That's right. You have, well, <laughs> you have arcade. arcade. Who yeah. else? Is anybody else a breakfast No, that's the only breakfast okay. one. Um, but yeah, you could technically go to each one and kind of double up on some of them if you wanted to. Like tonight, we're doing a Dory because they're doing bar snacks and a cocktail. Right. But after that, I can still eat dinner. Have you so, been to Dora yet? Oh, my God. Yes. Isn't it great? <laughs> it's easily one of my favorite dining experiences. Yeah. I plan to get there this week, too. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm picking two, three if I have time, but two places yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we did Rizzo's. Now, Rizzo's, just for everybody else, uh, you know this and I know it because mm-hmm. I we just happen to know these things, but he hasn't been open for lunch. Now, last week, he opened for lunch, mm-hmm. kind of an unusual thing, open for two days. Yeah. But it was just to have some restaurant service because he had to shut down to to get his stepdaughter to college. Mm-hmm. They had to go away. So so anybody who thinks that he was open, that he was, had reopened for lunch, no. 
but open all week this week. And as of next week, he's going to reopen some, but yeah. he's not sure what day. Yeah. So we were just talking with, with Michael yeah, Patrick. trying to get the, the scoop. <laughs> chef, well, yeah, the chef owner about, about when he'll reopen. And we just, he knows he's going to start out a couple of days a week, but he hasn't decided which days yet. Yeah. So it's hard. It's still exciting, though. Yeah. I loved his lunch. The I lunch mean, was fantastic. The, the lunch was great. So we ate this big Ooh. lunch. It was, I mean, I have half of mine <laughs> is sitting over here. I think Natalie, Natalie's <laughs> eyeing it. I already have a note. I saw I saw a text when we walked in the podcast room saying, what did you bring me back to eat? So <laughs> there's, there's what I brought you. But we had a fantastic uh, uh, fried Chicken thigh, yes, kind of sitting up in a big mound of mashed potatoes with a, a like a spicy <laughs> tasso gravy, mm-hmm. green beans, black and eyed black peas, eyed peas and, and that cor- cornbread, that cornbread with this apricot jalapeno butter. Yeah, it was good. Yes, and then I, I started with the salad. There was a starter too, <laughs> and you just did the soup. Yeah, it was good. It was all good. That was a great start to dining week. Right I think there. so too. Yeah. I totally agree. Completely agree with that. Um, but then you have, okay, you're, you have a place in Cordova. Yes, yes. So that's the exciting part, right, is that it's citywide right. and we can do this everywhere. So we, we have El Mero Taco in Cordova. That was a great addition. You know, there's tons in Midtown and downtown and East Memphis. We have a few in East Memphis as well. So can you, and we'll, if you can't name them right off the top of your head, yeah, we can link yeah. to them, but if you can, go ahead and name them. Yeah. Um, so in East Memphis, we have Dory, Magnolia and May, and uh, Park and Cherry. And then downtown, we have Arcade, Rizzo's, Seema's, at Hyatt, and Barware. Right. And uh, the genre um, and then Midtown, we have Tim Boley's, Pizza and Pasta, Bosco's, and I'm missing somebody. Oh, wait, no, downtown also we have Grecian Gourmet. That's right. Yeah. And then Midtown is Tim Boley's and Bosco's. Bosco's. Yeah. I, I, looked, I, I looked at the – I was at Bosco's last week, by the way, for the um, for the Cheers for Beers tour. And, oh. and we had some food and had what – what is so far my favorite beer on this tour? So that it was kind of fun to get back into uh, Tabasco's where I hadn't been in a while because yeah, eating, I think people forget that it's a brewery as well as a restaurant. Totally legit brewery. Yeah, too. it I is. Mean, that's what I, I said. You know, and it was ninety eight degrees that day at about oh, the time we were going. It need was a beer. still that hot, <laughs> and so I said, well, I don't, I can't do a food truck brewery type <laughs> situation tonight. Let's go. To Bosco's instead and mm-hmm. do, because it's a brewery. In fact, it was the first brewery to license, at, yeah. the first new brewery to license after Prohibition. Yeah. In, uh, it was in like 1992. So. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it, and, and it was all, I mean, it was good. The menus way cut down from mm-hmm. um, you know, pre-pandemic, yeah. but it was good. Yeah. But, and Tamboli. So that's interesting yeah. you mentioned that because somebody uh, sent me an email this morning and said, I haven't been to Tamboli's yet. What mm. should I eat? Ugh. So I just automatically, you know, just went into uh, yeah, the pizzas are great. Yes. But, but I, I thought, you know, let me take a look at the menu and make some specific suggestions. Chicken piccata. My gosh, look at how much his menu has changed. Yes, yes. And because I remember it being sandwiches and a pizza mostly, and now it's a and lot a more and a little bit of pasta. It's a lot more now. It's a whole his lot starters, more. right? They look phenomenal. I've had the mozzarella sticks. I'm going to easily say the best mozzarella sticks in no Memphis. Kidding. Yeah, I think it's, you know, because he yeah, has well, his own mozzarella. It's, right. It and just makes a difference. That sounds so good. <laughs> it's so good. And well, I, I took note that there was a there was a $50 dinner for two nights. So it's mm-hmm. pizza, two, uh, like, uh, you know, marinated olives to start. And then yeah. either, it was either two salads or two apps. I don't remember which one. A bottle of wine and oh, a pizza. Yeah. And he has such great deals. And then $10 pizza nights yeah, also. Yeah. When the pandemic first started, he had the, you could get the, was it two or a pizza and a six pack for That's like $12 right. or something? He had the, I went every Monday. <laughs> he, he did that. Was it $12? It wow. was like 12 Yeah, it wasn't a lot. I was able to do it considering I 
technically wasn't even working at the time. So I feel like it was affordable. Well, it, I, it, I know it was, but and it was local beer. Yeah. And yeah. a, uh, you know, it's a six pack a of beer six-pack. and uh, a pizza. Maybe it was more because a six pack is about. Yeah, it, it was had, probably it more. It had to be more than that. <laughs> had to be. He was giving it away. Giving yeah, away the pizza. With yeah. the, you know, for every six pack of somebody else's, right. I'll give you a pizza. But it was a good deal. I remember that too. Yeah. And anyway, I think he does. I think he does a really good job, and I think it's real interesting. If you may or may not know this, but you know he holds a degree in public health and tropical yeah, medicine. Yeah, from Tulane. Yeah, and um, so he. That someone was what did an it, article on that. I did that. Okay, yeah, yeah someone did. <laughs> that's true. But that's what he was planning to. So he he's pandemic ready. Oh, he I mean, knows. This is what he yeah. was studying, you know, and, and a nice guy. And yes, he, it's yes. just. It's a nice place. I've seen so. his wife like working in there with them sometimes. It, it, He's got the whole thing, it, the whole yeah. package. <laughs> and, and then he went to work at that. Uh, they did a, a documentary about the oh, yeah. uh, biggest little farm. Is that uh, what it's called? Yeah. Something like that. And they were Was it okra they were growing or something? Oh, they were growing a lot of things. Yeah. But they were growing. I'm sure they did. They grow okra in California? Well, yeah, maybe not. They may have. I've heard. I've seen so many articles from Miles, so I might just That's be true. getting things mixed up. But well, yeah, but he probably feels the same way about me. Well, you do a lot of things. It's easy to get stuff mixed up. Yeah, that you do. Because okay, so let's just let's. What did it start with? City tasting started tours? with city tasting tours. That's my baby. All right. Yep. That's and that was five when? years. Uh, May twenty sixteen. Yep. And it's all downtown tastings then, Yeah, right? it was all downtown. Sometimes I had a cross-town food tour every so often, but mostly 99% of the time it was downtown. And and so that was walking tours. Yeah. Just walk, we'd people walk around. Expect. Yeah, we walk around to different restaurants in downtown Memphis. You get to meet the chefs or the mixologists or, you know, um, you kind of get that insider feel. As you're eating at these different restaurants. And then as we go to the next spot, we also tell you the history or the exciting future of Memphis um, all in one. So it's it's like a cultural, historical food tour. It's It's a lot all in one. Do you do them on your own? I do. I had about three people staffed uh, mm-hmm. pre-pandemic, but... We'll we'll get back there soon, but not right now because I'm only doing private tours. So I I would always prefer to do the private tours. And most of the time when people book a private tour, they're requesting, you know, we want you to do it. So, yeah, I'm just doing all the privates right now. So if it's a private tour, it's for how many people? Six people is my minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, And 30 usually would be my max. I don't really do 30. Can you corral 30 on your own? No. Uh, yeah, I yeah, no. Anything hard. over twelve people, I'd have to bring in somebody. Mm-hmm. And you know, we always we we would say it's like gathering a bunch of people and trying to make sure we don't lose someone because you know you might towards the back they might be having their own conversation. And I've had people go shopping on the tour, and we lost somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get them. So after that time, I said, okay, I, I need to have somebody else here with me to make sure that we're like hurting them almost to well, the next place. No, for real, you yeah. would if you're going to keep up with them. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. of course, these are grownups, I suppose. If, they're, yeah, if they get but, lost, you, you know, know and they're drinking on those. So, well, yeah. <laughs> drinking and walking, though, not yeah. drinking and driving. So. This is true. Yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's all good. <laughs> and, from uh, it, uh, we're going to come back in mm-hmm. just a second. Then we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, and then we're going to come back and pick yeah. up the other city tastings <laughs> that you've got. Yeah, Imani wouldn't be here if it wasn't for St. Jude. Everything was perfect until that day when she was five weeks old. So there was a fairly large and aggressive brain tumor, but St. Jude Children's Research Hospital gave us the ultimate gift in this world, which was hope restored, and she's tumor free now. We came as two desperate parents, uh, and they saved our daughter's life. Visit stjude.org slash Won't Stop now to become a partner in hope and get the new We Won't Stop t-shirt. Okay, from city tasting tours, mm-hmm. you went I got into, into city. Uh, events. So I went into, you know, Craft Food and Wine Festival. That was such a good event, Christina. Thank you. It, it really was, was. It was a lot of fun, too. I kind of cried a few times because I was just Aww. happy. <laughs> I would, I would think you maybe have, because you wouldn't have known. Stressed. I went to the back. No, I was just happy that it, it turned out 
Like you saw the, you know, you had the vision yeah. and then it actually happened. And you saw, I saw so many happy people. And I mean, yeah, I can't even explain that feeling of it's finally here and no one has, you know, hurt themselves or no one is, you know, too inebriated or anything because, you know, it's a lot of wine. So it, it was a great event, though. It, it really was. It was a fantastic event. Yeah. It really was. It's, I mean, you know, I've been doing this a while now and there are a few firsts that I look mm-hmm. at and I say, I mean, of course, like, you know, Le Bon Appetit and Memphis Food oh, and yeah. Wine, you expected those to be right, right. great from the beginning because yeah. they had a lot of money behind yeah, them, that sort yeah. of thing. But I'm when a little I look, underdog that came in and everybody's yeah. like... <laughs> But you did, and there yeah. you did a great job. The first Memphis Burger Fest. It was a pouring down, cold, rainy oh, day Lordy, back in I September. I remember those. Yeah, at, in Minglewood, but it was so much fun. It Everybody was. had a great time, and the same thing then yeah. at uh, at Craft Food and Wine Festival. Yeah. And there are a lot of others that yeah. did not have, you know, such well, a and those are start. the kind that were like my inspirations. The mm-hmm. the Burger Fest, or you know, the ones that just kind of came out of nowhere and didn't have big sponsorship dollars right. behind it, but. You know, you see those and you see things that you like about them and things that like, oh, if I had this, I would do, you know, I maybe would do this, you know, and you kind of just take a little bit of everything that you see, you know, from different festivals that you go to here or out of town Mm -hmm. or wherever. And that's kind of how I, you know, created what I wanted to do. And then also it depends on the type of event. I mean, Craft Food and Wine Festival is for makers, food makers. So, you know, having the shop and like letting people eat and drink, but also be able to buy from the vendors is that's a big key part in it, too. So it was yeah. all very well displayed also. Yeah. And there were there were a couple of places where it did get congested because yeah. people were really waiting. Like, yeah, for, for, for the Kelly's food. Or, yeah. 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 Those little pies <laughs> yep. were, it was hard to get to those. Uh-huh. But that's that's OK. That's you thing. know what uh, is. I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. You learn that okay, this is if is that's a line that's obviously worth waiting in because right, people are right. in line. But, yeah. Um, but that it was a fantastic festival, and you had to skip twenty twenty, but it's yeah. coming up again in November. Yeah. So I always tell people they're asking about. Um, oh, you're doing two sessions. I was like, oh, we had that idea before COVID. It's, mm-hmm. I've I've never been a fan of big crowds right. at festivals, so. You know, it's broken up into two different se- tasting sessions. So you can buy the, the AM or the PM. And now for us, it's a long day. But for you, you know, you kind of get to come in, enjoy yourselves, get you some shopping and and then you're done, you know, mm-hmm. but or you can buy VIP and go all day. So we'll have those two sessions. We won't have the marketplace in the middle this year just so we can have more space. So all mm-hmm. the vendors will you can just buy straight from who you just tasted from. So if you so like right the, at their table, it'll be right at their table. Okay. So you eat the popcorn, you eat the cheese, you can buy it right then. The, so, so I thought it was like, you were, know, were last they, year it was right they, in the middle. I know, but I mean, the times there was a morning session. I thought, um, No, we kind of split it up a little bit more. It, I think last year was, not last year, it was a uh, 12, maybe. It seems like it was like something. 12 to 2 and 2. Yeah, and 12 to 2 and then 4 to 4 six. to 6, yeah. I think. It's different this year. Yeah. Is it or maybe be- I'm saying it's morning because I'm going to be there. Well, in the then you're going to be there all day. <laughs> I'm suspect. there all day. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but the first, the first, yeah, it is all evening. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It it's, to, it's, a, it's an early <laughs> session and a later yeah, session. Yeah. It's an early session and a later session. And, and it did like work a 3 out PM really well. And a 6 p.m. Because, I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty crowded. I mean, it wasn't. It got that first session crowded, is crowded. It was. It was pretty crowded. Yeah. For sure. That first session is definitely the bigger one because the VIP can come in too. So when people see that it's also two different price ranges, it's because we're really trying to get more people to go to that later session mm-hmm. when it's not as congested. So how do people buy tickets for it? Uh, craftfoodandwinefest.com. All right. Yep. It's all there ready and for you. And it's when? November what? November 21st. Sunday, November 21st. So, this- so it's right there during your shopping time too. It is. Yeah. That's for so sure. that's kind of how we thought this through <laughs> because so, we want people to shop, you know, and, and shop local. So think about it like, do I really want to risk it buying something online and it not get here in time because we all know shipping is crazy or just buy direct and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, it. this is a, a complete aside, but I ordered a couch about six weeks ago. Are you just getting it? Uh-uh. Yeah. 
Uh, no. Am I just getting it? I'm supposed to just be getting it in about another week, but yeah. I've had four delays, and now I'm wow. not getting it until December. Wow. Yeah. So that means they ran out. It, it, and that means they. Ha- to- I think that means you have to pay for it before you get it. I think right. we're not going to build it until we have your money. Yeah. And it's isn't it the? I it mean, is it's, strange. It's just supply chain. Is yeah. What it is. Yeah. It's obviously not that. It's not a, you know, a, a small company. I'm not having a custom made couch. <laughs> it's just a couch I want to buy, but it's taken that long for it mm-hmm. to arrive. So, three months, yeah. four months, yeah, to get a couch. That, yeah. That's wild. It so is. I wouldn't be counting on. Anything, <laughs> if you're planning to buy a big gift for it, you yeah, know, relying on it. For yeah, Christmas. after no, I, you know, which gets into the next thing, things, right? Well, not Feast and Grace, but that, so Feast and Grace Feast came. Feast and Grace, we definitely want to talk about. So that, yeah, that came from Craft Food and Wine right. Fest. That was, you know, we love cheese, we love meat, obviously. That's why we made a cheese board festival. But, <laughs> you know, and the we realized jellies. that you could... Make a living off of a cheese board delivery company. And again, there wasn't one. So we decided to do it. And it just soared way past where we thought it would, you know. And you you do such great pictures of that. Too. That's something. <laughs> it's very that, Instagrammable. Yes, it is. It's so colorful. It's, right. you know. Yeah. It, it, it's like therapy, it's really, honestly, it's making really good. them. You know, we did a video. Yeah. Making one. We'll have yeah. to attach that to this yeah. too. So that was can, a lot of fun. That was fun. Yeah. It was <laughs> and a you lot had of a fun. really pretty board. I it, remember. Uh, well, it, but at the, at the end of today, let's come back to that because Natalie over here is going to <laughs> do a charcuterie board for a, um, a friend's shower this coming weekend. And yeah. she's going to borrow that board and maybe you can give her a. We yeah, I got, I got you. <laughs> but but I also, you've got more. You yeah, have more there's more. To talk about. Yeah, <laughs> but wait. Yet again. Well, the City Tasting Box. So City Tasting Box, which we are definitely in the shipping world. It's a all online mm-hmm. food boutique. You know, it's an right. e-commerce store. Um, we curate different boxes of local Memphis dry goods. I would say shelf stable goods, and ship them around the country. Um, that came about simply because I couldn't do tours anymore. I had to figure something else out pretty fast, uh, to keep generating some income in my household. Uh, and luckily my business partner, Lisa, she gave me a call one day just to check on me and see how I was doing. And I was like, I'm not doing good. I'm sitting on the kitchen floor and I'm not sure where my life is headed. (laughs) So... And I normally don't tell people how I'm actually doing. I'll say, oh, yeah, girl, I'm fine. And then we move on. But this time I actually told the truth. And I'm glad I did because it entered into this whole, you know, now we're going from friends to business partners because I told her about the idea that I had. And she loved it. She comes from a corporate marketing background. So she already was her brain was already going, you know, oh, we could do this and we could do that with it. And at first we thought, oh, we could put this in a cute little bag you know, just make some gift baskets or something. And then that conversation seven hours later turned into, oh, this is going to be a box and we're going to make it really cool. We want Maya Sane to like do the artwork on it because we love her. And it it turned into City Tasting you talked, Box. You talked for seven hours? We talked for seven hours. Wow. And I, I mean... <laughs> There's nobody it's, I like enough to talk for seven hours on the phone. We were that talking about really... my life. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> we were talking about a life-changing experience. <laughs> so, and I honestly, about four hours in, because Lisa isn't that person. I'm I'm a seven, I will, you know, I'm a go, 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 go until we figure it out. You just talk every day. Yeah. You, yeah you so we would talk every day, but not for seven hours, mm-hmm. you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And about four hours in, she said, Christina, not going to lie to you. This is a lot. <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> she was like, but we're all such, you know, it's going so well. I guess I just overwhelmed her a little bit with my just go, go, go. Mm-hmm. But she, Lisa adapted very quickly and, um, with her passion in the food and restaurant industry as well, it just, it just synced so quickly. And, you know, a few months later, we finally got to launch it. 
And here we are. Now, is Lisa involved with Memphis Restaurant Week, too? Oh, yeah. Um, because, like I said, we wanted to do events first. We didn't. Right. City Tasting Box wasn't on the radar at all. Um, we just thought we would do events together. So now that's kind of coming in, but slowly but surely, mm-hmm. you know. So she's not really, uh, she, mostly with Memphis Dining Week, not so much with Craft Food and Wine Festival because that was kind of already established. But she knows that I'll bring her basically into anything that I'm doing. I just, you know, I bring it up to her first and let her decide because <laughs> she's a busy woman. So so who do you have? I want to talk uh, again about Memphis uh, Food and Wine because at Memphis Craft Food and Wine. Yeah. Because Memphis, well, it's just craft, craft food, and food and wine. And wine. Yeah. I knew I had something wrong in there, and it was Memphis. Um, so, how many people do you have this year? How many vendors? Oh, we're still working on it, um, but we have a lot of the ones we had last year. So we we have Rizzo's. He's going to be our mm-hmm. VIP chef. So he'll be downstairs making a humongous grazing table. Um, last time I talked to him, he said he was doing like a, the Parmesan wheel with the pasta and like all of that. So yeah, he's going. He's getting the big old. Going, yeah. Oh, that is. So, you know, I've never eaten that. Have oh, you? Oh yes. Yeah. Have you had it? Uh-huh. With the, well, I, in Vegas, of course, because you I, know they show out all the time. Yeah. But, yeah. And that is showy, but yeah. that'll be a fun thing to yeah. do. Um, but upstairs we'll have uh, pops kernel again. We'll have um, CNR there cranes. Make sure I say it right. Crane's Nest is the honey. The mm-hmm. honey. I don't know if you okay. remember. You had the honeycomb. Oh, I, I do remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't think of a lot of them right now. That's so many lists well, that's okay. that I have we to don't, do. We don't have but to. I can, I can definitely tell you some of them later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <When I get. laughs> but you will have. Or, where It'll is it definitely this year? be a lot of Maker's Same Place. Same uh, the, the Columns. Yep. Yeah. So we wanted to definitely keep a spacious place. Mm hmm. All of that kind of stuff helps. The and and it was it wasn't yeah. it it probably was. I mean, 2019 crowded and 2021 crowded maybe a little different. Maybe a but, little look a little different. Yeah. yeah. So we were selling like less tickets, you know. So. But you still, I I feel like a lot of people on are hesitant to buy things that um, are big. Events well, and, well, yeah, I mean, but they're well, kind of I say too. that, but then Lollapalooza happens. So. Well, I mean, <laughs> in well, and you know, Mempho uh, is going to happen. And well, the, yeah, but they're having restrictions. They are. They're so, going to. Have you thought uh, about Garner anything? Fest? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're still working on how we want to do. Are you the thinking whole about COVID vaccine uh, or? Room. Yeah, it might be. You know, either I'm actually going to New York, so I'm going to be in a space where they're really enforcing certain things so i kind of want to see how it's going you well, know they're going to be wearing masks for sure yeah but but you so, but it's really hard to wear masks at a food, food event right right so it's you know how do you we're we're still trying to figure all of that out so i and i haven't been to any food events this year to even see how anybody else is like how how much they are regulating you know well, Memphis Food and Wine will come right before you, but of course, that's yeah. an outside festival, right? And what they're going to—I don't know if they've uh, said anything about. Yeah, they. It's so far because they, they haven't made any. A lot of they haven't made any any yeah. announcement yeah. about vaccine card or. or the, um, as, and that's a different ball game too. Sure. Any event planner right now, you don't even feel safe putting out <laughs> that you're even having your event, so you, mm-hmm. you don't. You know, everything you put out kind of then sticks with someone. So I don't really want to say what our guidelines will be until I really, really know what they'll be. Because I don't want to say one thing and then put my foot in my mouth and then it, it's another thing. So I feel like it's a double edged sword because mm-hmm. one, obviously, then it if would you be, don't, it would then be it's much simpler. For the people who are holding events, the people who are running restaurants, if the county or the city would say these this are the is rules, what, right? But you're leaving it up to us. You're leaving it up to so individuals. I'm like, well, what? And <laughs> right, and, but, which part do I do? You but know? what if people buy tickets and then they and, the, and it's somebody who objects to showing right. a vaccine well, you card? Can get a and refund. Then, well, I mean, would you? Would you give them <laughs> oh, a yeah, refund then yeah. if they wouldn't? We've show already it? had to give at least two people a refund, but it wasn't for that. They just said, "I, you know, I'll rebuy when it gets closer." I'm not sure right now. Well, that's fine. It, it well, I, I do because think I don't that, want someone there fussing at me. You know, sure, I, no, I don't I want mean, anybody doing any. You know, I, so if you're if you don't feel comfortable, 
I totally get it, you know? <laughs> I just feel like that some of the things, I mean, I'm, look, I mean, you know, I, I have a picture of my vaccine card on my phone. I have mm-hmm. my vaccine card in my wallet. I'm yeah. happy to show it to anybody. You put it anybody. in a Ziploc bag. The, uh, That's uh-uh. what I did. You have yours in a Ziploc bag? It's in, yeah. I, I that's the safest, it. Is maybe? It? Yeah. I don't know. Well, there's, there's an app. That you so it's verified, oh. and there it, it, I just read this. In fact, I'll I'll put a link to it in uh in with this podcast too, if anybody wants to do it. So it's a verified vaccine card, and it's some states have their own. Tennessee does not, but there is an app you can uh, download. Yeah, okay. but Mississippi does, for instance. Huh. So, um, I mean, it's kind of you know. Well, that swap. might be good because like yeah. when you're checking in, you know, we check your ticket, we check yeah. your pass, yeah. And you know that okay. Here's your here's your app. I mean, mm-hmm. the app says so. It's a yeah. it's a verified app yeah. that has verified that you are in fact who you say you are. You're vaccinated. Yeah. You show the ID. And yeah, because you have then to show your you ID go. anyway. Right. So that's yeah. true because you're going. It's, it's a, 21 a twenty-one and up, up event. Right. So yeah, that so, might be the answer. See, it may be. I have to talk to people. That's how I figure these things out. I think, and I think because I can't great. do it on my own. That you know. <laughs> well, you know what? None of us can. We can't. <laughs> no. But you do so. So much, and I, you know, everything you do, you're 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 very good for Memphis. Thank you. You're you're yes. a, a very very good Memphian. <laughs> you Born and raised. Real. Yeah, that's right. And and it's uh, th- I hope you have a great week this week. Yes, with Memphis Restaurant Week, and we'll put we'll list all the restaurants or put a link to them. Um, and I. Good luck with uh, craft food and wine. I'll Thank be there you. for sure. Yes, yes, yes. And um, with Everything else you're doing. Thank you. Maybe I'll. Oh, and City Tasting Box turned one. We kind of celebrated, but not really. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> now, let's, if we have a few minutes, if if we can get permission from the producer over here. Yes, permission. <laughs> She's like, got all the thumbs. <laughs> what are a couple? Uh, I'll give like two or three tips to making a charcuterie board yeah. for your home. Yes. I mean, for your, you know, your home cheese. table. I always start with cheeses. So cheeses, you need at least one soft cheese. Think brie or goat. You need at least one aged cheese. I always go for aged Gouda or aged cheddar. Um, and then we call them a young or soft cheese. That could be a young Manchego mm-hmm. or or a young Gouda. Um, start there. And then after that, Figure out what pairs with it. Fig jam is always just go there. When you, when you're in doubt, fig jam and mustard and olives, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, crackers, some people are big on that. It's crackers, you know. They, they <laughs> you get you know, get your water crackers, butter crackers, wheat crackers, and, and you're fine there. But meat, obviously, mm-hmm. is a big one. You, you have to have salami. A dry salami or a hard salami and cut it up. Use a really good knife to cut it. Um, try to get, you know, at least your spreads or something local. That's always a big one for us. So mm-hmm. with Feast and Graze, we, it's hard for us to get local meats or local charcuterie outside of like home place pastures, but we can get, um, you know, Jacko's pepper jelly or thistle and bees honey or, um, 1844 Riverside's mustard. Those are all people that'll be at Craft Food Wine too. Um, but you know, your spreads, your meat, and your cheese. That's that's your go-to. And then make you a nice little cracker combo with with all of that, and you're good. But always get a dry salami. That's that's a general favorite. You know, prosciutto, kind of. Some people like it, some people don't. But if you can find speck or capicola. Everybody likes those because it's a little thicker. And, you know, prosciutto is stretchier. So some people, they'll think they like prosciutto, but really they like speck or capicola. Well, the problem with prosciutto, which I love the flavor of it, is that it when gets... When you peel it? it yeah, you, you really need to cut it into... Me, you yes. need to get some scissors or a knife. Let me tell you. Because it just keeps pulling. And it's the hardest it's thing chewy. to make pretty, right? too. Because, you know, we have to do presentation. So... I have a love-hate relationship with prosciutto because I'm like, oh, we got to put this on the board. <laughs> but it it really can slow us down when we're, you know, because we can make a I, about 10 minutes now. I can make a whole board for somebody, but that prosciutto will slow me down. Oh, it sure. doesn't matter. And it's been two years and I'm still <laughs> struggling. Know, so, yeah. 
I had a dog. He was a great dog. He's been gone for some years, but I had a, a little cheese board with some prosciutto, some olives, some grapes, this sort of thing yeah. on my kitchen table when I was having my kitchen redone at least 10 or 12 years ago because I've, I've since had my kitchen redone again. And um, the guy who was the the help, you know, the kitchen designer, he smoked. So we went outside for him to smoke a cigarette, came back in. And all the prosciutto was gone. Nothing else was touched, but the dog had reached over oh, yeah. to the far side and picked up every little piece of mm-hmm. prosciutto mm-hmm. and had taken all that and not <laughs> disturbed a piece of cheese hey, or anything he else. He, he did. Yeah. That's all he wanted was yeah. the prosciutto. Yeah, Baxter was a good fellow. <laughs> Christina, thanks so much. Yeah, thank for, you uh, for coming and this enjoy was fun. enjoyed having lunch with you too. Yes, good it luck, was delicious all week. <laughs> In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.